I bought this CNC mill about a year ago. Prior to my purchase, I knew almost nothing about machining. I knew that this part spun and this table moved and that was basically it. So in this video, I want to cover my journey. Up here is a brief table of contents of what's to come. And if you stick to the end, I'll tell you if this purchase was life changing or a waste of money. At the start of my journey, I had some projects I wanted to make. Projects such as this, and this, and maybe even this. Up until then, I had heard of some companies such as PCBWay or Zometry, and I even considered ordering custom parts for them, but I don't like waiting. Inspiration hits at random moments for me, so I like to keep my manufacturing stuff in-house as much as I can. At that time, I thought to myself, I feel comfortable with 3D printing. CNC machining should be just as easy. Well, I was very wrong. As I began to look at what machines were in the market, I came across a few options. Machines such as the Carvera, the MR1, and finally this, the Tormach PCNC 440. I was very close to ordering the MR1. I had even placed down a deposit. It was half the cost of the Tormach, had a bigger milling volume and had everything I needed, but there were two big issues. One, the MR1 was a lot more experimental. They had cut costs by using interesting methods. Looking online, it seems the product was a success, but it did require some DIY fixes that I wanted to avoid. The bigger issue I had, which is more personal, is that Langmer Systems, the creators of the MR1, did not have a financing option. At the time, I did not have $7,000 to spend in one sweat. Maybe a more experienced person would have saved up or taken out a general loan from the bank, but that was not me. So I went back to look at what Tormark was offering. Kudos to them, they have a very fast response time and answered all my questions. Unlike other cheaper options or older used machines, Tormark offered both good insurance and future proofing that I realized I was gonna need on my journey. After a few calls, I sent them three of my, three of my banking statements, necessary personal information, and even provided a cosigner to decrease my monthly costs. If this process sounds familiar to you, it is. It is the same process I went through when purchasing my car. After some time, I was given some financing options from three years to six years. And I went with the three year option as that lowered my monthly interest. Now for the final price. Starting price was $7,000. This gets you almost everything you need to start milling parts. Since I am placing this machine in my bedroom. I also went ahead and purchased a chip pan, a mill enclosure, and a stand. In hindsight, I could have saved some money in making my own enclosure and stand, but at the time I was a complete novice. I could only learn so much online, and I did not want to potentially hurt myself by cheaping out on parts. I had a cooling system, and that is basically my build. I purchased my milling tools and vices separately as I did not need to finance that, and I could purchase that out of pocket. In the end, my monthly cost came down to about $380 a month. But I did run into an issue. I had to get insurance on the machine, and since I am technically not a business, I do not own any um, insurance. So I had to use Tormox insurance, which sucks. <laughs> Bringing my monthly total to about 460 a month. Yikes. So for those following along, that is roughly $16,540 in total, with the machine costing $12,000 and $4,560 going to interest and insurance. After a few weeks, my machine finally arrived. Sadly, I didn't record anything, but at my doorstep were three large wood crates. Opening them up was simple enough and inside were all my purchases. Again, I apologize, I have no recordings of me assembling the machine, so I'll be using some other sources for illustration purposes. The first part was simple enough. The stand came in sheets and assembly was quick and easy. The hard part was lifting the actual base of the machine. The base alone weighed 250 kilograms. Normally, a sane person would use an engine hoist, but I did not own one. So with the power of four adult Mexicans, we lifted everything and prayed everything lined correctly. With that done, the enclosure was next and my machine was ready to start milling. Or so I thought. Just how 3D printers have G-code, 
mind-blowing machine has something called an NC program. But unlike 3D printing, configuring my instruction set is a lot more hands-on. I have to align my mill, measure my stock, list that measurement, calculate feeds and speeds, illustrate cutting depths, be aware of entries, change tools, measure tools, and locate starting points. Luckily, YouTube had plenty of resources for this and the learning experience was actually really fun. Now, after waiting weeks for things to ship and learning how to write CNC programs, the only thing left to do is to start milling. I really don't want to break this machine and I for sure don't want to lose my fingers. So I export my program, put it on a flash drive, and upload the program to my CNC. Uh, two minutes, and I'm pretty sure. It's my favorite kind of free rental. Oh, that side. It's going to be any You do not want to. Before I try to cut metal, I started with a block of wood. And as I click start, I see the end mill start spinning and descending to its target. And success! Everything seems to be going smoothly. And in my hand, I hold my first port, a crappy wooden karambit. Now that I have gained some confidence, I try my first aluminum part. I click start, I see it begin to spin, slowly descends, and another success. Although still rough around the edges, I have successfully created an aluminum part. From there, I tried different things with varying success rates. This is one of the first parts I ever made. It's my taking an ISO grid and it allowed me to practice. This is how it looked beforehand. I cut away a lot of material since uh, I was practicing, but this would normally be quite a, a waste of material. The part looks pretty decent from afar, but up close it has a lot of imperfections. My next parts were for my robot. I was practicing how to cut them. So you can see they're very solid, but there are also a lot of imperfections. By not centering properly, I've created a lip here, which should not be. So this part's a lot, or this part's really ugly. My next projects are a lot more, I guess, artistic. But, um, they included some smaller objects like rings. Right, this one I tried to do some manual milling on and chipped it. I also went ahead and created a wallet. This holds a few cards. And I really do like it because it is pretty cool walking around with a metal wallet. Although the parts I can make aren't aerospace level, they are still very functional. My main goal for buying this machine wasn't to sell parts, but if I were to do so, creating a physical portfolio would be a great thing to do. Tied into CNC machining is a great channel to learn from, but for my needs, word of mouth by friends has been a great start. So far, I have made little profit, but having the opportunity to practice and learn and grow has been a great thing for me. I can't expect to be a master machinist by not first doing and making mistakes. So that's basically where I'm currently at. As for how I feel about my purchase, I think it was worth it. Sure, there are other options that may have been cheaper or even other machines that are better. I assume a lot of people would argue that my money may have been better spent on purchasing a used Haas, but everyone's circumstances are different. For example, I don't currently have any means to transport a used Haas to my house, let alone across the states. Even if I did, I couldn't fit it through the door of my room. Though for people with an actual workshop and a truck, it might work for them. Everything I have discussed in this video is subjective to me, but I do think it can be helpful if someone is in a similar situation. I learned a lot on my journey and also probably made a lot of mistakes. But as I look back now, I'm glad about my decisions. 